Hello and welcome to Food Integrity Now, news and talk radio advocating integrity in our global food source. I'm Matt Spaeth, and in the studio with me today is Susan Wright. Hi, Matt. Welcome, Susan. And on the phones, we have Carol Gravey. Hi, Are Matt. You... Hi, Susan. Hey, Carol, Hi, Carol. Thanks for joining us. So uh, anyone following the news lately on GMOs has no doubt heard about the recent deregulation of GMO alfalfa. That is has been a continuous battle between the uh, organic and conventional farmers in that realm and um, definitely something that the biotech companies have been trying to push forward. And uh, there's a lot of concern around that because GMO alfalfa and the way it's pollinated has a great risk for contamination, probably the, the greatest risk for contamination of any of the GMO crops out there. And it has a lot of organic farmers concerned, especially the dairy farmers who rely on organic alfalfa to feed their dairy cows. And many are saying that we may not even be able to have organic milk anymore as a result of this deregulation. And uh, so there's a lot of news out there on both sides of the issue, um, specifically the uh, the biotech companies are really pushing for it. And um, But to try to decipher this and, and give a little insight into what well, what we may see in the future, we have Rick Thomas as our guest today. He is a he has a PhD in holistic nutrition, and he actively counsels and lectures across the country on nutrition and nutritional healing. He his company is called Holistic Nutrition for You, and he's going to be he's joining us today to discuss the contamination we can expect, as well as the negative effects of GMOs on the immune system. Rick, welcome to the show. Yeah, good afternoon, Matt. I'm uh, very happy to uh, uh, be on the program today. Great. We're happy to have you here. So uh, start us off, Rick. Let us, let us know, how did, you get, how did you get involved in this? Because I know you're active. Well, I've, uh, yeah, I've had a, uh, an ongoing interest in uh, to- toxins in... Uh, both dietary toxins and environmental toxins for quite some time. And obviously the uh, issue with uh, GMOs uh, uh, has really uh, uh, been gaining steam across the country uh, as new research comes out. And um, it's it's very problematic. Um, There's a lot of research that... uh, uh, I like I alluded to is uh, very recent uh, with some uh, a lot of very disturbing uh, statistics and uh, and findings and some of this research and you know I might uh, I might add uh, just uh, in your in- introduction about uh, uh, the issue with uh, GMO uh, uh, alfalfa it uh, one of the things that uh, is very disturbing at this point is that uh, we- we've got some uh, some really fantastic advocates across the country. Uh, one of uh, one of the organizations is called the uh, Organic Consumers Association, and they're about 850,000 people strong, uh, with about 3,000 cooperating uh, retail co-ops and natural food stores and farmers markets. And one of their um, platforms um, ha- that they identified some time ago was to uh, oversee the conversion of American agriculture to at least uh, 30% uh, organic by the year 2015. Um, and this becomes really problematic with the, uh, with the ruling by the uh, uh, USDA and, and actually the Supreme Court uh, recently in that the, uh, and you had uh, touched on a little bit, the uh, uh, this uh, lofty gold by the uh, OCA, which is uh, um, which is a great uh, platform and goal to have uh, for consumers in this country, uh, it's it's really uh, basically putting the uh, roadblocks up with uh, 
with rulings by the USDA and the FDA because of the cross pollination and uh, and other uh, ways that uh, that these crops become uh, contaminated. So I understand. Let's talk a little bit about that that contamination because I I think that there was the USDA study determined that originally determined that the deregulation that it should it should be regulated because the possible contamination would have great ramifications on the on the organic farmers and that based on that study that they should not deregulate it um did That's they correct. did they just go against what their advisors had advocated well that ruling came down in uh, 2007 which uh um, which uh, prevented, uh, you know, the uh, uh, the GE uh, alfalfa seed uh, companies from uh, uh, getting that out on the commercial market. Um, like I said, that was back in 2007, and then recently, the uh, U.S. Supreme Court basically said that uh, uh, the uh, U.S. District Court have had overreached its boundaries. Uh, in this ruling, and uh, basically opened up uh, the uh, distribution of uh, of the uh, commercialized uh, GE uh, alfalfa seed. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of interesting to note that uh, there is a uh, uh, organic seed company by the name of uh, Cal West uh, uh, that provides the uh, uh, GE or the uh, GE free. Uh, alfalfa seed out in the area of uh, California and uh, uh, actually some of the uh, states that are very uh, high producing alfalfa uh, states are like um, California and Washington and Oregon and uh, Idaho. Uh, But they found that between just in the time that the uh, uh, U.S. District Court had ruled back in 2007 that the uh, Seeds were not to be uh, distributed and uh, and uh, grown out on the uh, uh, fields. Um, Cal West had done some studies, and they found that uh, even with that ruling, twelve percent. Uh, it was approximately twelve percent of their their uh, seed had been contaminated uh, by the uh, GE uh, seeds and crops. Wow! So that was pretty compelling. Yeah. So. Did that mean that people were planting GE crops illegally? No. Between uh, 2005 and 2007, um, uh, it was it was allowed until the uh, oh, okay. court ruling, the U.S. District Court ruling in 2007. Um, but the fact was that uh, that even in that small period of time, uh, the contamination. Uh, uh, yeah, was found to be at least like twelve percent of the uh, of the organic seed uh, crops. Wow, that's that's a large percentage for such a short amount of time. Exactly. So what what do, what do you expect to see? Let's let's say that they that the ruling stays as it is. What 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 do you expect to see in the future? Well. If the uh, ruling stays the way it is, um, uh, I'll back up and say, fortunately, we have some uh, some really strong uh, advocates across the country, like I uh, had uh, mentioned earlier about uh, you know the Organic Consumer Association. But there's a couple other organizations. One is uh, called the uh, Center for Food Safety, uh, and the director is uh, Andrew Kimbrell. Um, it's about 175,000 members strong, uh, but they're, uh, uh, in my opinion, they're a very uh, influential and, and strong organization, and they have filed lawsuits in the uh, in the past regarding uh, uh, stopping the uh, the uh, uh, well the uh, utilization of the uh, GE seeds. Um, another organization that I'm sure many people are aware of is the Institute for uh, Responsible Technology, uh, and that's headed up by Jeffrey Smith, who is uh, uh, well known across the country for uh, his uh, his activity in in uh, uh, putting a stop to uh, uh, this GE uh, contamination across the country, and he is the uh, 
he has put out a, a few books, uh, Seeds of Deception, which is a really compelling book, uh, Genetic Roulette, and uh, GMO Trilogy. Uh, all very, very uh, uh, interesting books, and, and I, uh, I really suggest to people that are interested on the subject uh, read these books because it, uh, it um, explains a lot in the, uh, in the whole field. We're a big fan of Jeffrey Smith. We had him on the show a few months ago, and it was phenomenal, the information he shared. He's, he's just such a wealth of information on the topic. Yes. I, I recently read a, an article about uh, how Whole Foods had stopped uh, opposing genetically modified foods just recently. Did you, do you have any comment on that? 